Hi, this is Turquoise from our living room. Uh, if my roommate comes in, don't mind him. Um, I am doing a video. Um, it's a little dark in my room. And uh, I'm using a different phone, so I'm having a little bit of trouble uh, situating the stand so that um, you can see me. Um, I'm going to do a video about uh, something that I, I feel is very meaningful to me. Um, I've been talking a lot about limerence, and um, limerence is basically um, usually a feeling for someone that you that you is unattainable, um, romantic feelings, um, very intense crush. You feel like you can't uh, get your mind off them. There. Thoughts of them dominate your life, you know, dominate your work time, your your sleep time, your your school time, if you're in school, everything in your life. And um, in, in my uh, life, I have uh, coped with having crushes on celebrities by uh, making imaginary friends out of them. And um, I caught myself doing that again uh, to try to transfer my limerence from uh, this person that I've been having a crush on for the past uh, year at this uh, IOP program. And um, in order to transfer my limerence, which is uh, one way to cope with limerence if you really can't uh, get over it, you basically uh, make yourself focus on someone else that you find intriguing or find equally, maybe even more powerfully, uh, romantically uh, interested in. And um, I tried that for a little while, and it, it, it was working somewhat, but then it kind of stopped working because I realized that the, uh, the uh, ideas of the real person were coming to mind, if you know what I mean. And I was starting to feel like I had to kind of snap out of it because uh, it was someone that um, someone that's not alive anymore. But basically, I know that uh, other people in the world know him and love him and respect him. Maybe, maybe some family members, maybe his uh, surviving uh, companion. And if it's a romantic thing, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, feeling like I'm comparing myself to her. Um, I worked a lot on jealousy in my mental wellness process and my universal ethics code. I have used compersion. I'm honestly happy for her that she was fortunate enough to have met this uh, individual. But um, when I'm making this individual my imaginary friend, even, if, even though he's not alive anymore, um, I'm feeling guilty about it. I feel like I'm using, using a human being for my gratification, and I don't care for that. So um, I'm, I'm doing something very creative. I'm doing something that even maybe some therapists might recommend. Some experts on limerence might recommend um, creating a fictitious character, creating a, uh, a person in your mind, creating someone. And in order to do that, it is advisable, it, I've been advised to um, make up a totally fictitious name and look them up. Thank goodness for the internet. Thank goodness I don't have to go to the library and, and look at references, look at the you know, the microfilm, you know, that we used to have back in the 80s. Excuse me. Um, I'm learning the Russian language, and I'm uh, giving this uh, character a name of that language. And all for part of the day, I've been looking at names. And... Um, I watched a movie, I watched a Russian movie last night, and one of the characters had a name that I really liked, that I really found intriguing, and he was very intriguing and very handsome, and uh, he was the leading man, and you know, then there was the leading lady, and it was a romantic thing, and I was so struck by that. I don't know, I, I like, when, when I can uh, control my environment somewhat, when I can uh, turn the movie off when it gets to me too much, I can handle watching romantic movies, and um, I'm taking control of my my fictitious life and my real life, if you know what I mean now. I'm trying to take command over my limerence, 
And if I want to be limerent on someone, I want to be limerent on a fictitious character that I can control in my mind, that I can make happen or not happen. And um, I put together the first name of this character that I saw in a movie last night, and I gave him a last name of another famous person. But it turns out that, that um, there's another individual with that first name and last name combined. And I found I couldn't use that name. And um, so I looked through the database with my AI question and answer uh, app. And it said, okay, why don't you use this first name and this last name? And since it's uh, a fictitious name, since I've done my research, I'm going to go ahead and, and say the name. His name is Oligan, 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 I think. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right. I'm still learning Russian. Oligan Bashiknikov. Bashiknikov. Bashiknikov, I think. And um, I'm making him have uh, dark hair and blue eyes. And um, he's between maybe 40 and 60, around my a wide age range of my age range. And um, I might make him 37. I don't know. I'm 57, but um, we're both adults, so uh, we can date. There, there are uh, relationships like that. Um, I even studied a Christian relationship. Um, I watched a video on a, or a podcast where there was a, a young lady, 18 and older, and um, a man, I guess, in his 40s, and uh, it worked out. I think God wanted them to be together. So they were sharing their story. I'm not sure where to find it, but, uh, you know, search, uh, search May, December, search, uh, relationships where age doesn't matter. You know, as long as you're both mature and compatible. Um, so I'm working on making a fictitious character and I'm doing this to explore, um, what it might be like for me to be in a, in a functional relationship. Because I want to practice for real life, as I have not practiced as a child and not practiced even as an adult. I've always known dysfunctional relationships, especially romantic dysfunctional relationships. And I have compulsively had crushes on, uh, just to make myself feel better, um, Heidi Preeb, I'll name her. She's, she's great. She's awesome. I love her work on YouTube. Um, she talks about she asked this question on a video, do you use limerents to regulate your emotions, to regulate yourself? And I think I must have done that all my life because I was dealing with the depression and the despair and the heartbreak of not having a family that, that, that cared about me. I had a mom, I had a mother, but uh, she passed away when I was nine. She was the only member of my family that actually wanted me on this earth, actually wanted me on this earth, but tragically she died of a long, a long painful illness, but she wanted me. I know because I read it in, I read in her diary after she left her diary, uh, after her, she died, I read it as an adult and she loved me and she wanted me to be here and she didn't want me to be hurt. She didn't even want me to have her life. She was having trouble with love too in relationships. She went through two divorces when I was a baby. I'm not kidding. You know, first divorce when I was a baby, the second one when I was four, it was horrible. It just, so, um, I'm trying to teach myself how to have relationships and I am going to the IOP and I'm learning how to interact with people and, uh, cope with my, uh, fading limerence towards, uh, Olga and she's also Russian. So I'm really fascinated with, with Russians and I, um, I'm also uh, listening to some music from uh, a Russian on YouTube and I find his music amazing and I'm hopefully just behaving like a fan. You know, I think he's good looking, but I like his uh, work better than I like his looks. Really, you know, it really is what you do with your life and your attitude that matters to me, everyone. It's not just how you look. I mean, being attractive is a blessing. You know, it helps you get into it more easily. But um, I think God has other plans for us, folks. I'm going to go.
be safe everyone, happy sunday night.